was it? Forsyth Tech in North Carolina. Many of the students there used to work in the surrounding factories that have since left town. One mother of two, uh, a woman named Kathy Proctor, had worked in the furniture industry since she was 18 years old. And she told me she's earning her degree in biotechnology now at 55 years old. Not just because the furniture jobs are gone, but because she wants to inspire her children to pursue their dreams too. As Kathy said, I hope it tells them to never give up. If we take these steps, if we raise expectations for every child and give them the best possible chance at an education from the day they are born until the last job they take, we will reach the goal that I set two years ago. By the end of the decade, America will once again have the highest proportion of college graduates in the world. One last point about education. Today, there are hundreds of thousands of students excelling in our schools who are not American citizens. Some are the children of undocumented workers who had nothing to do with the actions of their parents. They grew up as Americans and pledge allegiance to our flag, and yet they live every day with the threat of deportation. Others come here from abroad to study in our colleges and universities, but as soon as they obtain advanced degrees, we send them back home to compete against us. It makes no sense. Now, I strongly believe that we should take on, once and for all, the issue of illegal immigration. And I am prepared to work with Republicans and Democrats to protect our borders, enforce our laws, and address the millions of undocumented workers who are now living in the shadows. I know that debate will be difficult. I know it will take time. But tonight, let's agree to make that effort. And let's stop expelling talented, responsible young people who could be staffing our research labs or starting a new business, who could be further enriching this nation. The third step in winning the future is rebuilding America. To attract new businesses to our shores, we need the fastest, most reliable ways to move people, goods, and information, from high-speed rail to high-speed internet. Our infrastructure used to be the best, but our lead has slipped. South Korean homes now have greater internet access than we do. Countries in Europe and Russia invest more in their roads and railways than we do. China's building faster trains and newer airports. Meanwhile, when our own engineers graded our nation's infrastructure, they gave us a D. We have to do better. America's the nation that built the Transcontinental Railroad, brought electricity to rural communities, constructed the interstate highway system. The jobs created by these projects didn't just come from laying down track or pavement. They came from businesses that opened near a town's new train station or the new off-ramp. So over the last two years, we've begun rebuilding for the 21st century, a project that has meant thousands of good jobs for the hard-hit construction industry. And tonight, I'm proposing that we redouble those efforts. We'll put more Americans to work repairing crumbling roads and bridges. We'll make sure this is fully paid for, attract private investment, and pick projects based what's best for the economy, not politicians. Within 25 years, our goal is to give 80 percent of Americans access to high-speed rail.
This could allow you to go places in half the time it takes to travel by car. For some trips, it'll be faster than flying without the pat down. <laughs> As we speak, routes in California and the Midwest are already underway. Within the next five years, we'll make it possible for businesses to deploy the next generation of high-speed wireless coverage to 98 percent of all Americans. This isn't just about, this isn't about faster internet or fewer drop calls. It's about connecting every part of America to the digital age. It's about a rural community in Iowa or Alabama where farmers and small business owners will be able to sell their products all over the world. It's about a firefighter who can download the design of a burning building onto a handheld device, a student who can take classes with a digital textbook, or a patient who can have face-to-face -face video chats with her doctor. All these investments in innovation, education, and infrastructure 